Hello and welcome to the Pound of Poppy blog. It's Inspiring Monday and I'm Allison Cope, your hostess, and we're going to talk about color theory today. In order to talk about color theory, let's bring up a color wheel. And I'm sure all of you have seen this before. We're, we're going to go a little bit more in depth about why colors are positioned on the wheel in the way that they are. So when you're talking color, a lot of the time you will hear the term primary color. Well, our primary colors are three basic colors. There's yellow, blue, and red. And these three colors are colors that cannot be made by any other colors. They are standalone colors just by themselves. Secondary colors, on the other hand, are made using primary colors. So for instance, green, purple, and orange are our secondary colors, and each of these colors is made using a primary color or two. So in order to make green, you need yellow and blue. To make purple, you need blue and red. And orange, you mean yellow and red. So secondary colors are a mixture, an equal mixture of the primaries. When creating cards and scrapbook pages, you need to group colors together that make sense. A group that is commonly used is called an analogous group. And this group is basically any three or more colors that are on the color wheel that sit side by side. So even though this is an example, Another example might be violet, blue-violet, and blue. These three colors are analogous because they sit side by side by side. So in looking at this, there are tons and tons of analogous colors. Complementary colors are used quite extensively, especially when using paints and Copic markers and other coloring mediums. And they're really important. So for instance, a complementary color, like these two, yellow and purple are any two colors that sit directly across one another on that color wheel. And the easiest way to kind of remember this one, I kind of start with the red and green. Let's kind of think of Christmas. So red and green are complementary colors or they're colors that sit directly across from each other on that color wheel. Blue and orange are complementary. Yellow and violet and same with any of the tertiary or third colors. So our third colors are any of the colors that are in between our primaries and our secondary colors. So our red vi violet is a tertiary color and its complement is a yellow green. So there's lots of complementary colors on the color wheel. Colors are not just colors themselves, they have tints and tones and shades. So let's talk a little bit how you get a tint, a tone, and a shade. So our regular colors, for instance, our yellow is the hue. It's basically the pure color. It's the name of the color. That's kind of how you remember. So the hue is the actual color. Now, when you want a tint, you take your hue and you add white to it. So, for instance, let's take one that's a little bit more easily seen here. We have our violet at the bottom here. And when you add white to violet, you kind of get a lighter tone of violet. And, of course, I'm using the wrong terminology right there. You get a tint. So, violet plus white gives you a tint of violet. Now, when you're talking tones, you're going to add gray. So once again, you take your violet and you're going to add some gray to it. And you're going to get a slightly darker color. Now, when you add black to it, you add a lot of richness and depth. So when you hear the word saturation, saturation is how much gray has been added to a color. So for instance, this one is really easily seen. Yellow is our hue and we add our black and our gray, this creates a deeper saturation or more grayed out color. 
So when you hear the term saturation, it's the level of gray found in your hue or in your color. Okay? And tint is how much white is added. So I hope this has helped you all a little bit today. I'm going to actually go and show you some cards now. Let's put this color theory to action. All right, let's go through some examples here. For the stamp sets, I will be sure to put them up in the top corner of the screen there so you know all of the fabulous stamp sets that you can purchase through Power Poppy. All right. Our first card, um, we're going to talk about cool colors or warm colors. Warm colors are yellow all the way over to the red violets and the complete opposite side are all the cool colors. And this card entails more cool colors than anything. So generally, not always, you like to group cool colors with, with other cool colors. They tend to go together better. Another concept when card making is the pinch pint and gallon theory and what that is is that when you're using color you use a tiny bit of one you use a moderate amount of another and you use a large amount of another generally so as for my example here I've used a lot of this kind of light greeny teal color purple would be my secondary Color or my moderate amount of color and my highlight color or my pinch would be the lime green to make it pop. Most people don't use more than three colors on a card. Um, when you use more than three colors things tend to go awry. <laughs> you can pull it off but you generally have one focal color, a highlighting color, and an accent color. Let's bring in another example. This card highlights using your complements. So for instance, red and green are complements on the color wheel. And I've used red and green, so it's complement on this card. What those two colors do when you use them, they make each other pop. They tend to stand out a little bit. Plus, when coloring using mediums, when you add green to red, they actually act as a shadow creating color. So if you took a Copic that was green and added red to it, you could use it as a shadowing effect for your coloring. So if you don't have tints and tones of gray to add, Try using a complementary color to achieve that. Once again, in this card, we've used the complementary colors. So red and green, and we've thrown in a little bit of purple violet. I'm gonna bring in two cards just to show you the difference. Um, when you're creating a card, you want to create a card with a certain feeling. So for instance, this one here, not only does the sentiment tell you that it's bright and cheery and energetic, but you also want to use colors that portray that feeling as well. So I used rainbow and bright and colorful and made it everything pop, whereas this one is a little bit more subdued and subtle and I use soft shades. Now, if I were to take, for instance, say this bright yellow and use it, it wouldn't, the card wouldn't have the same impact as having all of the same feel across the card. So energetic, use pops of color, bright, bold, beautiful colors, and something more subtle, like for a sympathy card, you might be a little bit more tendency to use some soft, subtle colors. So when you're trying to portray a mood, Think about what colors you might use. It is important. We talked about an analogous color scheme, which is three or more colors that are sitting next to one another on the color wheel. 
And this card here uses pretty much that color scheme. We have a yellow in the plaid. We have going into the orangey, orangey reds with the bloom and the yellow greens in the leaves. And it works because they all sit side by side on that color wheel. So once again, another choice when you're thinking about color. So this card here is going back to when we're talking about tints, tones, and shades. And I wanted this card to have a more vintage feel. So I worked and played with the level of gray in my image. Not only do my pattern papers have more gray in them, they're not bright like this yellow, they're more subdued. But my images that I colored are more subdued as well. The yellow is a little bit more subtle. The greens are a little bit more grayed down. And everything works. So when you're thinking about color again, think shades or the saturation or the use of gray that you're going to use. It's important to portray a feel as well as bold colors versus subtle colors and one more last example here this example basically shows the use of complementary colors i wanted to make sure that my chinese lantern plant stood out from my card so with it being orangey yellow tones i knew i wanted to work in somewhere into the blues because there was more orange, the complement to orange is blue. So I brought in a navy. I also brought in some blue in the background to make things pop against the background. And I brought in some blue paper in the back. And I used the red to tie in my berries. Color is really important when you're talking about card making. Think about, do you want a bright color versus a dull color? Do you want a complementary color that makes something on your card stand out more, like the orange, and I wanted to use the blue as the complement? Do you want to use an analogous grouping? Three or more colors on the color wheel side by side. If you start with your image, choose your pattern papers to go along with your image. If you start with your pattern papers, choose your image to go along with your pattern papers. It can work both ways. Thanks for joining me today. I hope I was able to convey some of my color, color theory and how it applies to card making and coloring today. And I hope you join us again on the next Monday for Inspire Me Monday. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great week, guys.